Well, hello. Good to see you again. And uh, today I've got a special guest with me. Hi. <laughs> My beautiful wife. What's her name? Oh, Kathy. That's an old joke. Yeah, anyway, um, that's what my dad used to always do. Yeah, it's, it's a grandpa joke. Well, today uh, we're doing a new segment called He Said, She Said. Uh, it's a conversation with Kathy and me. We've been thinking about doing this for a long time, and I guess the time is right. And uh, I'm so glad that you've come and, and uh, joined us today. Uh, today, Kathy is going to talk a little bit about um, Scripture with you and some Scriptures that mean a lot to her and her life. Uh, especially during this time of upheaval and um, distraction and social distancing and and disappointment, this is a this is an important piece of scripture that she's going to share with us today. That comes from her own experience, and she's going to share with you also a little bit of writing that she's done that relates to this the scripture that we're going to talk about today. So we're, we're glad that you've you've come, and this is a conversation. So yeah. how are you doing, Kathy? I'm doing great. Um, what 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 have you? come to talk a little bit about today? Um, well, as I was thinking about everything that's been going on lately in just the world and in our community and home, um, I was really struck by how there are a lot of disappointed uh, people out there right now and a lot of unmet expectations. And so um, as I was thinking about that, um, a person from the Bible who I've studied um, over my over time uh, that came to mind is Leah and she of course is one of the characters in the book of Genesis and is really a, a key uh, character in the um, life of, um, of Jacob. Um, Jacob was the son of Isaac who was the son of Abraham and so a very uh, significant family that God used um, to bring about his purpose and his plan for the world. And um, so Leah um, though was um, came to my mind as someone who uh, faced a lot of disappointment and a lot of unmet expectations in her own life and um, kind of what she did and how she lived through that um, is really written in black and white on the pages of scripture for us. Um, in uh, kind of a little history, um, Jacob, who was the son of Isaac and who was the son of Abraham, um, uh, Jacob had to leave his home in a real hurry because he and his twin brother Esau had had a great disagreement and he had to run for his life, really. And when he did, he ended up in the home and community of his uncle Laban. And um, Laban had two daughters, Leah and Rachel. And Wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have Leah and Rachel as part of our church congregation, don't we? Yes, we do. <laughs> Lee and Rachel, are, is the same Lee and Rachel as our, in our congression? Different, oh. different Lee and Rachel altogether. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, so Leah and, and Rachel were um, the daughters of Laban. Leah was older. Rachel was the younger sister. And when Jacob saw Rachel, he was uh, pretty much smitten. It was love at first sight. And he um, uh, just was very... Um, very attracted to her. And so as he boom. Lived, boom. It sounds like our story. <laughs> I went to a faraway land and this beautiful, beautiful lady shows up. There it is. <laughs> and so um, anyway, um, as Jacob lived there and began working for Laban, Laban said to him, hey, uh, you can't work for free. What can I, what can I give you in return for your work? And, and so Jacob said, well, I am, want to marry your daughter, Rachel, so please uh, let that be um, what I'm working, let her be the, what I'm working for. And so Laban said, that's great. That works for me. I would rather, um, rather she marry you than anyone else, really. And so, um, so, he, Wait. so they agreed on that. Yeah. This is a great idea. <laughs> You think? Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of work around the house. If Graceland or Caroline come home with a guy, can we, like, uh, conscript them for seven years? Uh, you could try. There's <laughs> so much to do, and, man, it'd be an right. awesome idea. Yes? Who knows? Who knows? It, it, it didn't really Caroline, work out. The, it, it all Grace, works on paper. <laughs> Livy. As my mom says. My mom says, it all works on paper, and it kind of maybe, maybe uh, that's what they thought it would be for Laban and Jacob. Um, so, but no, Jacob agreed. Um, Laban said, okay, work for me seven years and you can marry Rachel. And so the Bible says it really seemed like the time flew by for Jacob because he was so um, happy that he was going to get to marry Rachel when that seven years was over. 
And sure enough, when the seven years was up, they set the date for the wedding. And um, meanwhile, Laban had um, a little bit of a trick up his sleeve, which was that he um, switched the two um, sisters. Um, so Leah was hidden under the wedding veil during the ceremony, and Jacob unknowingly married Leah instead of Rachel. And the Bible says that, you know, the, the next morning, Jacob woke up and there was Leah and there's like a exclamation point there was Leah like ah and so it's um, crazy yeah poor thing she so her her marriage started out with um well deception and um really um uh, uh just not what she would have expected and can I say something though? please do just on defense of the guys in the room <laughs> I, I mean I think that that we all recognize that there's some deception and there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. There's a trickery, and I, I, probably in that culture, that's almost expected. Mm -hmm. But in reality, uh, uh, Leah needed protection. She needed someone to marry her. She needed the honor of that. Mm -hmm. She needed to have the welfare of marriage to cover her and to provide for her. She needed to have the opportunity to have children. Uh, and I think of. Um, the story of Hannah and how the women in her own household disrespected her because she didn't have children. And uh, so Laban wanted Leah to have a family, to have protection, and to be cared for mm -hmm. in a home, in a household, especially one, one like Jacob's. And so I think, that, I think that he was looking out for her and caring for her. It was, it was a deceptive thing. But, but as a dad, he was trying to do what he could for his daughters, especially for Leah, who's, who uh, seems to be more undesirable than Rachel for right. whatever reason. Sure, yeah. I just want to say that as a right. shout out because I, I, I mean, I, I think we make Laban out to be the villain, but right. he, he really was trying to care for her in that culture. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, yeah, something about Leah was maybe un desirable or something. The Bible says her eyes were weak. I don't know. But um, uh, when Jacob realized that this um, switch had been made, he went to Laban and said, you know, what? Why did you do this? And, and Laban said, well, you know, of course we can't have the younger daughter getting married before the older daughter. And um, here, here's what I'll do. I'll make a deal with you. Um, just you uh, finish this first week of marriage with Leah and then I'll give you Rachel as your wife, and all you have to do is work for me for seven more years. And so Jacob said, oh, okay, I'll do it. And um, so that really is the beginning of, um, of Leah's uh, complicated life, of the um, disappointment and the unmet expectation of, of um, how things were going to be um, as a wife. And um, the Lord, though, um, what's really neat is that the Bible says that the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, and um, I think the fact that she was, um, she must have felt so unnoticed and uncared um, for, and yet God, the Creator, saw that she was unloved, and so He blessed her um, in in a way that would bring honor to her, and that was um, through giving her the gift of children. And so, um, in the in the story in Genesis twenty eight or twenty nine, um, she has um, really almost really in quick succession like stair step children, four sons, um, who um, she named. They all have very significant um, names that she gave them. And um, she thought with each birth, well, this is going to draw Jacob's heart to me. This he's going to love me now. He's going to become attached to me. Um, and yet her circumstances really didn't change, and Jacob didn't have a, a change of heart toward her um, in any of those situations. And um, so finally, with her, um, after that fourth child was born, she named him Judah, and Judah means praise. And so she just was like, just praising the Lord for her child and not um, uh, just kind of sort of a little sense of acceptance, I would say, of where she was. Um, and then um, Rachel, though, um, meanwhile, had not had children. She was barren and was very heartbroken over that. She was desperate. She said to Jacob, you know, give me children or I'm going to die. And he was like, I'm not God. I can't do that. And um, so, so she turned to a cultural solution of that time, which was 
to give her handmaid um, kind of as a surrogate mother to Jacob. And, um, and uh, both she and, and uh, Leah were given handmaids um, as when they got married. So Rachel said, here is my handmaid, and I want you to have children with her, and they'll be like children to me. And so in that, um, in that way, the Lord actually gave two more sons to Jacob through, through Rachel's handmaid, Bilhah. This is, this is not a recommended marriage idea. No, it was, it was kind of a culturally <laughs> accepted thing at the time. So, um, meanwhile, Leah um, had stopped having children at that point, and so she recognized that she was not having children, and she had to try to keep up with Rachel because now Rachel has these, has these children through her handmaid, and so Leah said, well, I'll just give my handmaid Zilpah to, to Jacob as well. And, and Zilpah had two sons as well for Jacob, and um, so that was just how God continued to grow that family. And um, eventually, Leah did have two more sons, and um, the Lord opened her womb again, and she had two more sons, and, um, and Ra- Rachel also had two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. And so, really, in the crazy circumstance, I, I call their story like the real housewives of Canaan. There's these, all these four women and all this just children. It sounds like turn. a. It sounds like a book title or. A, yeah. <laughs> should yeah. we work on that? Maybe. <laughs> should you uh, Should you do the Real Housewives of Canaan? So that's what the, that's what I think they were, and um, so um, so through through these um, these four women, uh, these uh, the twelve sons of Jacob were born, and who would become the twelve tr- sons of Israel, um, as his name was changed to Israel later on. Um, so. In the midst of it all, um, as I read this story, I, I look at Leah and, and, and really all of them, and I think, wow, huh, their, their life story, their failures and their successes, um, their strengths and their weaknesses are just so just plain as day right there for us to read about. And I think, wow, I would not want someone to read my life story like that, like thousands of years later, and know such personal and um, painful um, details. But um, I'm glad that they're there. I'm glad that the story is there because it really um, shows how I think you can trust God in the midst of the, the failures and the, um, the difficult things and the sad, the sad things um, that because I see that God had a plan and worked through all of it, um, I know that he is still the same God today that he was then, and so he still works through the sad things and the disappointments and, um, and the broken, broken plans and dreams. And so, so uh, do you have yeah. something that you wrote? Yes, uh, yeah. You, you've been writing some poetry, um, mm-hmm. and this poetry is uh, in, I think, two parts mm-hmm. right here today. Right. Um, so, when did you write this? Um, I wrote this several years ago. Um, our our ladies in our church had a retreat that was called Bloom Where You're Planted, and um, Leah was kind of the person that came to my mind as someone Wait. who, yes. <laughs> when I was a child, uh, in the guest bathroom, when you would go and sit on the potty with your little, little legs dangling off the edge, <laughs> my mother had placed a plaque across from the toilet Uh that you can look at when you're sitting there pondering life. And it said, bloom where you're planted. Uh And quite frankly, it it scared the bejiggers out of me because I was worried that I'd be stuck on the toilet and begin to bloom. So I got (laughs) off that toilet as fast as I could. There you go. (laughs) Does that have any relevance to this story? Probably not, but it's it's a good story, though. (laughs) So... um, so when we had this retreat with the, with the theme of Bloom Where You're Planted, Leah was um, someone who came to my mind as someone who really lived that out in her story and in her life. And so I wrote, um, I wrote this to share then, and so it's just kind of, I've actually added to it a little bit over the years. And um, so I wrote it, though there's um, kind of two parts, like Ron said. One is kind of just talking to Leah and addressing her now, just looking back. And then the next part is as if Leah is speaking and kind of what her words would be. And so um, I'll read that right now. 
Um, the first part is written to Leah. <clears throat> Leah, if you'd known you'd be outlived by the story of your life as an unloved, neglected wife, would you have hidden? Behind a brave facade of lies, would you have sought a safe disguise? I'm glad you didn't. Maybe there's something you'd conceal, perhaps the things that make you real, real insecurity, real loneliness, real jealousy, real faith, real doubt, real rivalry, real joy, real pain, real loyalty, real trust in God in spite of your humanity. You lived and loved and lost. Yes, with your life, you paid the cost of lessons that I learned from you today. I'm glad you didn't live your life a different way, because with 2020 hindsight, I can see things that your weak eyes and perspective couldn't glimpse, because I know that there's a bit of you in me, and with this knowledge comes humility. And with humility, I gain a sense of gratitude to God for you. And then um, the part that is like Leah speaking. I'm Leah. My eyes are weak, but still I see my husband loves my sister and not me. When we're together, still I am alone. His love and tenderness is only shown to Rachel. Lovely Rachel, beautiful Rachel, barren Rachel. But I am blessed. A child is born to me. The Lord has surely seen my misery. Because of Reuben, Jacob will love me. But no, I'm still alone. Yet, loneliness has its reward. My unloved state has reached the Lord. Again, he's blessed me with another son. My second child shall be called Simeon. And though I'm alone, I know I'm known. Again, I'm blessed. And Levi, he is named. And with his birth, my son's now number three. Though Jacob's love no longer is my aim, perhaps at least he will become attached to me. But it's not to be. I'm still alone but I have grown. With my next birth, my son's now number four, and with Judah, I will simply praise the Lord. Just when I think my faith is strong, I see how weak I am as Rachel makes a choice to change her life. Unhappy with her childless state, she takes matters in her hands and gives her maid to Jacob as his wife. Another wife, another loss for me. And when Bilhah has borne Jacob two sons, Rachel proudly thinks she's won a victory. And now I find that I'm the barren one, but I won't be outdone. The choice that I must make is clear. I'll give my handmaid too. To build up Jacob's family, it is all that I can do. And Zilpah does bear sons for him. Two boys, what joy, and I feel blessed again. And even more, I'm blessed when God listens to my prayers. I know he's there, I know he cares. He's given me another son to bear. A blessing from the Lord, Issachar my reward. Then one last time, God grants another son, a precious gift, a child called Zebulun. Six sons I've given Jacob now. My life and love have been poured out for him, for God, for family. This time, my husband will treat me with honor. And the Bible says in Genesis 49, when it was time for Jacob, um, at the end of his life, as he was giving instructions to his sons, he says, I'm about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre and Canaan, which Abraham bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. There, Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There, Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there, I buried Leah. And the last part... Leah says, a place of honor in your death, but did you know before your final breath that you were more than just a woman bearing children, bearing scorn, much more, a woman used by God, a nation born? That's beautiful. Um, I wonder if, uh, would you be willing to post that um, manuscript on the Facebook group sure. for people to see? Sure. Uh, for me, I find that Poetry kind of uh, is rhythmic, and, and it tends to, I get lost in the rhythm and the sound of it. And so uh, I miss p parts of it, and maybe people would like to read it again. Okay. Um, 
So what kind of in summary, what, what would you say uh, this, this retelling of Leah's story, it, how is it helpful to uh, maybe some students, to some of the young ladies in our church? Even uh, this week we have, uh, we've had two women who've had surgery in our church family. And uh, because of the, the health situation, uh, they can't receive visitors and, mm. and they probably feel mm -hmm. quite, quite alone. Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what would you say in these circumstances that we're facing, what, what would you say this story brings? Um, well, I think that it brings, um, it brings hope and um, kind of a sense of promise that God is in control, that he can use and work through our brokenness and through our disappointments um, even, he can use those for, um, for his own glory and for, um, our, um, for our, our growth, I think our, our own faith and personal, um, personal trust in him can grow. I think sometimes even, even more richly than, than, um, if it was just what, the way we would have written the story or the way we would have planned things. His, his plans have um, a different purpose than what we would, have, would sometimes expect, I think. And um, I know with Grace, um, our, our daughter who is a senior in college, when she came home, and actually even when she was still on campus and calling us to say, they're sending all the students home, and I don't know how this is going to end for the semester, and I don't know when I'm going to graduate and if I'm going to be able to finish this or that, and um, all the different things that she had been kind of counting on, really, as her, for her senior year, different events and fun things that she was looking forward to just now are um, on the back burner and really probably canceled in a lot of situations. So she's just really disappointed. And her first um, response, which I think was natural, was just to kind of want to freak out and um, uh, be very overwhelmed. And I said to her, Gracelyn, um, you have been preparing for this. This is what, this is what college has been preparing you for. Because um, she goes to a Christian college called Cedarville University in Ohio. And um, so they have really, it's really amazing how they have just had this goal that they have a thousand days with their students. And in that time, they really want their students to grow academically, of course, but also um, really even more importantly in their faith and in their personal trust in the Lord. So I said to Grace, this is what you've been preparing for um, to, you know, it's great to have a degree and it's great to have that education, wonderful, but also to, to respond to the unexpected things in life and, and how is the Lord going to work in that? And I think that we have... Um, uh, so much, you know, we say, we memorize scripture and say, um, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you and um, that I will make the right choices. And so we have so much available to us. What a gift to have the scripture. Um, for me, I've felt even more drawn to want to read my Bible and see what the Lord has to say to me in these words because um, because that's the greatest source. It's not something that obviously Leah would have had. Um, she didn't have a Bible because she was, you know, part of the the beginning chapter of the Bible. And um, yet we have such a gift and a resource, um, the Word of God, in um, right in our finger at our fingertips. And so um, that's that's really what I would, what I kind of take from the story is to go. I want to trust the Lord, and how can I do that? And how can I how can I um, bring him honor and um, and find things to be thankful and to praise him for in the midst of it. So. That's a great word. And uh, thank you for sharing your poetry and thank you for showing, sharing your, your thoughts on Leah. Sure. Um, today is Thursday. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about uh, going back into the, the Bible and looking at more uh, examples of context. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday, we just talked about Graceland, but Graceland's going to come and share some things that God's been teaching her about God's Word, Scripture, and uh, that um, I really think are helpful to hear, especially out of the mouth of one of our younger uh, young adults. Mm -hmm. And so sure. I hope that you'll come on Monday at 10 o'clock uh, and visit with us again, Central 
standard time and uh, just be with be with us in that moment yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining us thank you Kathy for being with us and next Thursday um, we'll, we'll do this again okay uh, are, you, are you are you planning that already what, what you got planned any idea I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a surprise. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here, and may the Lord bless you today, and, and, and uh, have, a, have a great day in the Lord. Thank you.